Welcome back, everybody. It's a new day and another shot at the title. Slovenia keeps winning in the Olympics in its debut Olympic basketball debut, going 116-81 over Japan as Luka Doncic scores 25 points, records 7 assists, and 7 rebounds in just 26 minutes. Now, there's a couple things of note here. One, an, an incredulous stat that I saw before the game was that Japan was seeking its first Olympic Games men's basketball victory in 45 years. Holy crap. Now, hey, credit to Japan here. They hung tight. Like, you read that stat before the game, and you kind of think it's going to be a runway for Slovenia just to take off, go stomping on their face on the way to a matchup with the reigning basketball World Cup champions, Spain. But Japan made them work for it a little bit. Through the first frame, Achimura matched Luka Doncic, his 13 points. Achimura actually had a really strong game for Japan here. He ends up with 34 points and 7 boards. And through the first quarter, it was a 29-23 lead for Slovenia. Now, that's a lot closer. Granted, it's early. It's only 10 minutes in. But that's a lot closer than I was kind of anticipating this game being. And the fact that Achimura was really trying to match Luka and doing so pretty well through that first frame kind of gave you that indication. Now, things did balance out a little bit in Slovenia's favor going into the half. It was a 53-41 lead. But Japan really stayed within striking distance. They never let themselves fall too far back back and that was really illustrated by the fact that going into the fourth quarter it was still a 14 point game now that's nothing to sneeze at but at the same time it's it's not the kind of distance you would probably have expected there now one thing that definitely contributed to it i mentioned earlier the the quarters here it's not like nba's 12 minute quarters these are 10 minute quarters and japan was <laughs> They were hanging tight in part because Luca went out at the five minute, 30 second mark of the third quarter and didn't return until the nine minute and change mark of the fourth quarter. That extended stretch allowed Japan, I think, to kind of hang in even closer to Slovenia. Worth noting a couple things here. When Luca checked out at the five minute, 30 second mark of the third quarter, he went on the end of the Slovenian bench, draped a towel over his shoulders, over his knees, and he kind of just stayed there until he checked back into the game in the fourth quarter. Now, I don't know that that's necessarily any kind of cause for like, hey, what's going on there? Like any kind of curiosity necessarily, but paired with the fact that then after the game, he declined to answer any questions kind of makes me wonder a little bit if uh, if there was some mild something. Now, how he came back in and performed in the fourth quarter wouldn't necessarily give you that indication that something was wrong so maybe it's just nothing because when Luca comes into the game in the fourth quarter he immediately hits a step back three that extends the lead at that point to what did it extend it to it extended it to 80 83 66 that was at 83 66 uh just an impressive uh display from Luca there because when he came back in Slovenia in his final stretch outscored Japan 20 to 7, allowing him to check out for good with the lead at 100 to 73. So you see how in that case, they basically double up the lead from the point uh, going into the fourth quarter to the point Luca leaves the game for good. They pulled away in the fourth quarter. And that's what I've called in other videos during the regular season for the Mavericks, basically playing a game of now I go win. And that's where you're kind of messing around. It's a team that's a lot better than the other and they're kind of going back and forth trading punches a little bit and at some point the better team just kind of goes like okay that's been fun well we're gonna go win now and you know thanks thanks for the exercise thanks for thanks for helping us put in the work you know like at some point the better team steps up and differentiates themselves and that's in winning time and that's what Slovenia did here the biggest difference in this game I think was Slovenia really just controlling the boards and moving the ball well. They out-rebounded Japan 54-33, to and they were even able to out-assist them 27-15. to 
that's going to go a long way. And that's why I say it's more than just Luca. It's not just that Luca is doing Luca things. It's that the whole team is really running at an efficient high level. And that opened the door for them. And that's why they didn't have to play Luca as heavy of minutes. Perhaps it was just a matter of extended rest just to try and maintain him with that knowledge of, hey, we're in control of this game. And he literally did just finish up his NBA season. So let's try and give him a little bit more time, uh, rest him a little bit now so that when we absolutely need him to try and go Super Saiyan Luca, he's ready. We'll see. But uh, Slovenia very much in charge of this game. Yes, Luca came in and put the thing away, put the baby to sleep, if you will. But that being the case, it wasn't all Luca. Now, Slovenia in this case moves to 2 and 0 in Group C play. They are, as I said earlier, now set up for a matchup with the reigning Basketball World Cup champions, Spain. And Japan, meanwhile, will now have a matchup with Argentina. So that'll be an interesting one to see. Uh, any other notes I wanted to call out here? Uh, Zoran Dragic. Goran's younger brother. He had 24 points for Slovenia as well, so he actually was almost the leading scorer for Slovenia, even though Luka's uh, performance was incredibly efficient in, like I said, 25 points, 7 boards, 7 assists in 26 minutes. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. But we're going to see now for Group C play how Slovenia does here. I, I really think they're going to give us a good game, and this will be a really good indication. Because as I said, Japan, given their let's call it drought to be pleasant, pleasant and uh, nice. They're 45 year drought going for a win that that's not as impressive. Argentina, historically, we know where they are. We know how FIBA ranks them, but even that's a little bit of a different picture than years past. So this is going to be a real measuring stick moment to show us how far Slovenia can go in this next game against Spain, because it is more than just Luca. And I know, a lot of people watching this, especially people from Slovenia, people who follow uh, Luca's career very closely, they understand this. But there, there is more to this team than just Luca. Luca might be absolutely the best player on the floor. He might be the guy that really makes it go, the maestro, if you will. But it is a better balanced team than just Luca, and I think that's a testament to the coaching and really just to the talent as a whole. So. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.